Hi guys, welcome to Lumi. In our last video, we have introduced the concept of sample space and events in probability theory. Today, we're going to use these concepts to talk about what exactly probability is. Simply put, probability is how likely something is to happen. Formally, it is defined as follows. Given an experiment and a sample space S, so remember here that an experiment is a process by which we observe something uncertain. And the sample space is all the possible outcomes for that uncertain thing. So for any event A, we assign to it a number, PA, which we call the probability of the event A, as a measure of the chance that A will occur. And so it is defined as the number of outcomes that satisfy your event A divided by the number of total outcomes in the sample space. So it's basically a ratio of the number of times that A happens out of the, all the possible outcomes in your sample space F. For a very simple example on the definition of probability, look at the following. Here, let's define some terms. In this example, the sample space, or the set of all possible outcomes, here we're rolling a six-sided die. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six as our um, all, all the possible outcomes. And our events represent a subset of these outcomes. So namely, the events that we're looking at is Donald getting a number higher than four. So our event, which we call A, is five and six. So there are six outcomes in total, and there are two outcomes that satisfy our event. So we say the probability of your event A is equal to two divided by six, or we can say one third. A Venn diagram, as we have introduced before, can really help with our understanding of probability. On a Venn diagram, probability can be simply understood as area. So recall that on the Venn diagram, our sample space is represented by the rectangle on the outside. So this is our sample space. So we can say the probability of the sample space is equal to the area of the outer rectangle, which we know is equal to one. And as for any event inside your sample space, recall that we denote them with a circle. So the probability of event A can be simply understood as the area of the circle on your Venn diagram that correspond to event A. And next, there are two axioms related to probability, and they're both pretty easy to understand. The first axiom states that the probability of any event must be a number between 0 and 1. In other words, it cannot be a negative number or a number greater than 1. Um, the second axiom states that the probability of the sample space, which you can understand as the probability of all outcomes together, is equal to 1, or 100%. And other than that, there are also a few um, properties of probability that may come up in the calculation problems. The first and somewhat trivial property of probability is that the probability of the empty set, so the probability of nothing, is equal to zero. So there's not much to it. So if you understand it as um, on the Venn diagram, uh, the empty set is basically nothing, right? Nothing. So the probability of nothing is equal to zero. Next, we have this really key uh, property about probability that relates the probability of a union of two events to the probability of an intersection of two events. So recall that the union of events A and B refers to the outcomes where either A or B happens. And the intersection of A and B refers to the outcomes where both A and B happens. Now, to understand why this property holds, we can look to the Venn diagram. So as we have said before, we know the uh, region corresponding to A union B is all the region covered by your circle of A and your circle of B. And we know that this is equal to the circle of A. So we have the area corresponding to the circle of A, that's the probability of A. And then the circle corresponding <clears throat> to events B, and the area of that is PB. So what is the relationship between the probability of A or B, or A union B? 
with the sum of probability A and probability B. We notice that we can obtain this area if we add up the two circles together, but also notice that there will be a region in the middle, this olive-shaped region here, that we counted twice. And this region actually exactly corresponds to A intersect B, because in this little region here, both event A and event B have happened. So we can calculate as such. So the probability of A union B, so all the area inside either of these circles, is equal to the probability of A, which is the area corresponding to circle A, plus the probability of B, which is corresponding to area of circle B, minus the center part in which we counted twice, and that is the probability of A intersect B. And from this, we can also derive another property, which is exact, exactly identical to what we have here. So the probability of A intersect B, we can also write it as PA plus PB minus probability of A union B. And now let's move on to the properties of two mutually exclusive events. Remember by mutually exclusive, we mean that the event A and event B cannot happen together. And from this definition, we can dir uh, directly obtain our first property, the probability of the intersection of two mutually uh, exclusive events is always equal to zero. And this, combined with the relation between the probability of union and intersection that we have just derived, gives us the second property, the probability of the union of A and B if A and B are two mutually exclusive events is simply equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. So on the Venn diagram, you can see this property in action as well. So if A and B are mutually exclusive, that means on the diagram, they do not touch each other. So if you want the uh, probability of A union B, we will simply add up the area of circle A with the area of circle B. And lastly, the, a special application of this would be an event and its complement. First, we know that two complementary events are mutually exclusive. So A with A's complement can never happen together. So we can use the formula for their union directly. So we know the probability of A union A complement is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of A complement. But we also know that either A happens or A does not. So A union, A complement, is actually equivalent to your sample space. So basically, this states that if we know an event happens, uh, the probability of that event not happening is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. And now let's see all of these properties in action with an example. Suppose we have the following information on the probability of two events. So this type of logic puzzle questions is actually really common in your prob uh, probability courses and on your probability exams. So we start off with the first example. What is the probability of a complement? So this one should be fairly, fairly easy. We know the probability of A is 0.4. So we know A has 40% chance of happening. So the chance of A not happening, that is simply equal to 1 minus the probability of A, and which we can directly calculate as 0.6. So not much to it there. So next, on to question B. We want the probability of A union B. The way to approach these types of questions is to recall all the relevant formulas and figure out how to incorporate the given information. So for union, which formula do we talk about today? So we know the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Right, so now let's see which of these terms that we already know. So we know PA is equal to 0.4 from the information given to us in the question. But notice that we do not know the probability of B or the probability of A intersect B. So we need to figure these out somehow. Let's start with the easier one. So the probability of B we can solve. The question gives us the probability of B's complement is equal to 0.2, which means there is a 20% chance that B does not happen. And that directly gives us that the probability of B happening will be equal to 80%, so 0.8. 
And lastly, we need to figure out the probability of A intersect B. And we can use the last piece of information given to us in the question. Probability of A together with these complement is equal to 0 0.1. So here we use the property that if you add up the probability of A happening and B happening with the probability of A happening but B does not happen, so A intersect B's complement, we always get back to the probability of A. So we know the probability of a intersect B complement is 0.1. We know the probability of A is equal to 0.4. And then we can figure out the last piece of the puzzle. So the probability of A intersect B has to equal to 0.3. So if we combine all the numbers together, we have 0.4 plus 0.8 minus 0.3. And we get to 0.9 as our answer for part B. And as for part C, are A and B mutually exclusive? So we can understand this question with kind of the part of calculation that we have done for part B. So recall, if two events are mutually exclusive, it means they have no possibility of happening together, or that the probability of their intersection has to be equal to zero. But here we have calculated that the probability of A intersect B is equal to 0 0.3, not 0, which means there is a 30% chance that we can see both A and B happening. Therefore, they are not mutually exclusive. In summary, the probability of an event is defined as the ratio between the number of outcomes that satisfy that event and the total number of outcomes in your sample space. There are two axioms of probability and several important properties which serves as the foundation for calculation-based problems. Master these, and you're well on your way. Stay tuned.